Now, less gives us the ability to modify our variables. And we've seen where we can change the value of a variable by just simply entering in a new value. However, less gives us a lot more capability than just changing the value directly. What we want to look at now is how we can change a variable's value by modifying it with a small mathematical equation. You might be thinking, why would a designer need to worry about this? Well, we already do it all the time. If you use proportional fonts, where you say I want the H1 tag to be 250% larger, or I'm looking for it to be 2.5 M's, you're already using some real basic math, and that's one of the things that Less excels at. So what we want to look at is using the things that we already do, but using it within Less. And the perfect example of that is where people are using the rim unit of measurement. Now, rim is relative to the base font size down in our body tag. By default, that's 16 pixels, and we have set that up in our less file, as you can see by setting our font size variable. And rim has become a lot easier because it's based upon that base size, not based upon what the last font size was. So it makes designing our style sheets a little bit easier, a little bit more consistent. However, we do have the problem that's not supported by older browsers. And if we're going to have users who are using some older browsers, we need to provide some backwards compatibility for them. So what we're going to do is we want to look to see where we define our font size right now currently using a rim. Here's a perfect example. In our list items in our navigation, we make them just a little bit larger so they can be seen. Now. If a browser sees a CSS property it doesn't understand, it simply ignores it. So what we want to do is provide a font size where we can set a pixel value, and then if we see the rim, the newer browsers will take over that. That way, if the user is modifying their font size, they're trying to increase it so that they can have an easier way to see if they have a visual impairment, then it works quite well. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new line. We'll specify font size. And what we'll do is we'll set it inside parentheses to 1.1 times at font size. This way, by putting in parentheses, less knows that we are supposed to have a value that's going to be multiplied. We give it the value that we want to multiply it by, 1.1. And then we times it by our font size, which is our default font size. This gives us a very nice and simple way of equating it to the value that it's supposed to be. It allows us to increase it just a little bit for backwards compatibility, but the newer browsers get the rim value to use more efficiently for them. We'll go through and find some other values where we have font size, just to show an example where we can do it more than once. Here, for example, we have a margin left that is set to 3 rem. So once again, immediately before that, I'm going to type in margin left and specify 3 times at font size. We'll keep on doing this any place that we're specifying our rims. We can use it for paddings, we can use it for margins, we can use it for the font size itself any place that we're trying to keep a relative value for our font so we can provide some consistency. I'm going to save this information real quick, switch to my web browser, reload the document, and you should notice that it works exactly as you would expect. This gives us our backwards compatibility for our older browsers as well as being progressively enhanced for our newer browsers. That way they can take advantage of the newer features as well.